Coming up, join us as we decipher Hebrew inscriptions, explore secret temple tunnels, and uncover lost biblical artifacts. From the hidden cisterns to the fallen temple stones to the lost biblical gates and stairways, we'll peel back the layers of history to find what secrets lie beneath the Temple Mount. From the Jewish temple beams to Solomon's stables, enter the forbidden and lost world of the Second Temple. Did you know there's a shocking amount of evidence that the Second Temple in Jerusalem existed? We've identified 35 pieces of overwhelming proof that a Jewish temple stood in Israel 2,000 years ago. At 35, the Second Temple treasures. When the Romans destroyed the Jewish temple in AD 70, they stole the Jewish temple treasures. The treasures from the Second Temple were taken to Rome and paraded. Incredibly, on the Arch of Titus, you can still see the menorah, the showbread, the trumpet, so you can actually see inside the second temple of Jerusalem. And some brilliant artists and experts have reconstructed what the Arch of Titus would have looked like in colour. So we're very grateful for them for this incredible opportunity to see. So what happened to the temple treasures? Well, the Temple of Peace in Rome is where they were kept for a long time. Then the Jewish treasures went on a period where they were moved about. Eventually, the Byzantine Empire captured the treasures and they were taken to Constantinople and at the Hippodrome in today's Turkey the second temple treasures were displayed in this area then the emperor of Byzantine was worried they were going to see God's wrath because they had the Jewish temple treasures so the treasures were sent back to Jerusalem something happened they disappeared from history some say that when the Persians conquered Jerusalem that Christians buried the temple treasures under a church and everyone was killed and the church was demolished and therefore the Jewish Second Temple treasures disappeared from history, but are still buried somewhere in Jerusalem. Other people say that the Muslims who came and conquered the land took the treasures and destroyed them. Another theory is that the Temple treasures went to the Vatican and Israel had a long battle with the Vatican. Do you have the Second Temple treasures? And in 2004, the Israeli Antiquities Authority actually looked inside the Vatican vaults to see if the Second Temple treasures, the menorah, the other items like the trumpets to see are they in the vault they found nothing now other eyewitnesses claim that they have seen the temple treasures in the vatican in a sealed vault which even the pope himself is not allowed to know about because he might hand them back we don't know which of these stories is true but we do know the temple treasures went to jerusalem after 500 years of knowing their whereabouts they disappeared from history at 34 trumpeting place inscription buried for 1900 years. The Trumpet Place inscription was rediscovered in 1968 by archaeologist Professor Benjamin Mazar. In the first century, the Jewish historian Josephus, in his book The Jewish War, describes the custom for one of the priests to stand and give notice by sound of trumpet at the beginning and end of the Sabbath. Problem was we've never found any inscription until 1968. The second Jewish temple inscription proclaims to the place of trumpeting, which provides archaeological evidence that acquiesces with ancient Jewish descriptions of the temple in the time of Jesus. This ancient Hebrew lettering was found where it fell. Here it says to the place of trumpeting in Hebrew. This is a copy we saw the original in the Israel Museum. On Shabbat Sabbath, one of the priests would stand right up there on the temple and he'd blow the trumpet so everybody in Jerusalem would know it's the Sabbath. So this was absolute proof that this is the location of the temple. The second temple in Jerusalem existed and the descriptions of life in the temple at the time of Christ are accurate. 33, it's the temple warning inscription. Shocking evidence exists for an experience the Apostle Paul had in Jerusalem. In the book of Acts, St. Paul is accused of defiling the Jewish temple in Jerusalem by bringing Greeks into it and a riot begins. But did the Jews really care about Gentiles coming into their temple? Where is the evidence? In 1871, incredible evidence was discovered. An archaeologist rediscovered an ancient Jewish warning from Herod's temple saying, no stranger is to enter within the strand round the temple and enclosure. Whoever is caught will be himself responsible for his ensuing death. This inscription confirms ancient writings from the Bible. It is also 
also believe that St Paul was referencing this inscription when he wrote to the Ephesians, for he himself, Christ, is our peace, who has made the two groups one and has destroyed the barrier, the dividing wall of hostility. That's the barrier described in the temple warning inscription. This is another irrefutable proof that the temple stood on the Temple Mount in Jerusalem. So this is a really brilliant discovery that proves that Josephus' description of the temple, the ancient Jewish sources that describe the temple and temple life are true. Another incredible proof for the temple being a real place at 32, the Jewish temple floor. What did the flooring in Herod's temple look like for the first time ever? We possess an accurate reconstruction of the flooring from Herod's Jewish temple in Jerusalem. When an illegal excavation on the Temple Mount in Solomon's stables left piles of antiquities to be examined, the Temple Mount sifting project rescued the apparent junk that was thrown away. Amongst the discoveries they uncovered 100 coloured stone tile floor segments dating from the Herodian Second Temple period. By reconstructing these we discovered incredible patterns on what the Jewish temple floor looked like. These geometrically cut polished stones were laid with sacred precision on the Jewish temple floor and King Herod's architects employed this same technique in his palaces too. By reconstructing these tiles with the descriptions provided we get to see the temple flooring that Jesus would have walked on. In his portrayal of the temple Josephus describes the floor itself as paved with all manner of stones and artifacts from the temple mount reveal an eight pointed star pattern, four squares, a diamond design and others. Some of these patterns are now called Herod's Triangle and they were reconstructed by the brilliant Frankie Snyder. So now we can actually see what the temple floor looked like and we see the patterns that Herod used in the temple. He also used it in his other palaces such as Herodian, Masada and other places. At 31 the incredible triple gates. So if you go behind these sealed triple gates there are tunnels that date back to the time of Christ and King Herod and these tunnels used to lead up to the Temple Mount. The route is still there but these sealed gates are the main southern gates. Most of the pilgrims would have walked into the temple up the stairs and they would have exited by the double gates nearby. Now the walls of Jerusalem have been destroyed many times however they have been reconstructed following the identical pattern from the time of Jesus and we can therefore survey the routes that the Lord Jesus would have taken when he came in and out of the temple. So right here in front of the triple western gates, Christ himself would have walked up here all the way to the temple and then all the way down to the Pool of Siloam. We can walk where Jesus once walked. These sealed triple gates serve as the entrance to Herod's temple. Inside Solomon's stables, which has now been converted into a mosque, there still remains one of the ancient routes to the Jewish temple, but it's impossible for them to be studied due to the sensitive nature of the area. And you can see the ancient bedrock in some places where Jesus and his disciples would have stood on those ancient steps. This is the original bedrock here and they've carved the steps out going up. What you would find here is the rabbis would sit here with their students discussing faith, what God requires of people. We're not told in the scriptures that Christ did this, but as it was the tradition, we're told things in scripture like Jesus went up to the temple and he said this. Christ and his disciples would probably have followed the pattern of first century Judaism where you sit on these stone steps carved out of the bedrock and then you sit and talk and you say Lord I have a question about the Sabbath. At 30 the secret temple tunnels. Did you know mysterious chambers exist under the temple mount in Jerusalem Israel? Underneath the ancient Jewish temple built by Herod and Solomon before ancient tunnels, cisterns and hidden rooms were established. Despite mapping some of them very few people have been able to access the secret Jewish temple tunnels but archaeologist Dr Rittmeyer is one of them. In 1974 he entered a tunnel below the triple gate underground passageway. This tunnel may have been used to channel water from an ancient unexplored system hidden below the deep part of the temple mount. Another covert tunnel was also found below Solomon's stables which reached to the royal stoa in King Herod's time. All of these tunnels 
tunnels are now sealed, but countless others remain unexplored under the Temple Mount. And in one of these classified chambers, some rabbis claim they have a map to an undisclosed location of the antechamber containing the original Ark of the Covenant itself, which was buried under Solomon's Temple when the Babylonians stormed this sacred place in 586 BC. And they say, we have the map, we have the keys to the Ark of the Covenant and we're just waiting for the time to rediscover this temple treasure when we can build the third temple. All over we've been able to map these incredible tunnels, these incredible systems, but unfortunately you can't explore them because of the sensitive nature of the area. So we know that they're there. But Dr. Rittmeyer has been able to get inside some of them and map them. They've all been sealed off now at 29 Solomon's stables. We found King Herod's lost arches underground in Jerusalem, Israel. When King Herod wanted to extend the Temple Mount, there wasn't enough room. So he had to build these large arches, these vaults in the southern and western sections. So these vaults create underground chambers which still exist today. Now some have been damaged over time, some have been reconstructed and others are original. Here in Solomon's stables, the Crusaders once tied up their horses under the arches built for the second temple. Muslims in this area also pay respect to the legacy of the Jewish temple, safeguarding an area designated as the cradle of Jesus, where they believe Mary placed the infant Jesus when she came to offer a sacrifice at the temple to fulfill the law of Moses. This moment is documented in the Gospel of Luke and when God's servants in the temple, Simon and Anna, recognized Jesus as the Messiah and the salvation of God. At 28, secret steps from the lost double gates. Have you ever asked what happened to the secret gates Jesus used to enter the temple? On the southern wall of the Temple Mount, you can trace the faint outline of an ancient double gate to the Jewish temple that dates back to the time of Jesus, which is partially covered now by a crusader building. When you stand on the southern stairs looking to the Temple Mount from the south, you can see a crusader building, but behind it you can see the faint outline covered over of some double gates that have been sealed over. If you can go through those gates, you you will find secret steps and stairways up to the Temple Mount. When archaeologists tried to study this area, inside they found a secret section of the al Aska Mosque. They exposed this closed gate with a set of secret steps leading up to Israel's second temple. Behind me right here is one of the sealed gates which would have led to the Temple Mount. A century. This here is the original stones that Christ and his disciples would have walked up. Behind me here is a tiny part revealing the two double holder gates. The rest of the gates are hidden behind the Crusader building. Steps up to the temple are staggered. Now these steps are the modern ones, but they're based on the original, which are down there. This is a large step and a small step. The purpose for that is that you are not supposed to rush up to the temple. You're supposed to go up in prayer, contemplation. People would begin singing some of the Psalms, take the small step then take the big step and stop and think. Breaking up the pattern, architecture being used as a means to devotion. This sealed off room contains ornate Corinthian columns and decorations dating back to the time of King Herod. But it's almost impossible to visit. This was a route that Jesus and his disciples and hundreds of thousands of other pilgrims would have taken out of the temple. The Corinthian capitals found on top of the columns in this area are also found in the Golden Gate, which means they are probably reused from the original Jewish gates to the temple and the Corinthian capital in this secret area. So Jesus Christ, when he left the temple, would have seen these capitals. It's not allowed to be studied. It's not allowed to go through. It's very sensitive area, as is everything to do with the Temple Mount. But it is incredible because it's evidence for the second temple in Jerusalem at 27. The lost gate to the temple. Barclays Gate. Crazy facts you didn't know. A lost Jewish temple gate was rediscovered in the 
Western Wall in Jerusalem, Israel in 1852, a Christian missionary, James Barclay, discovered an ancient underground structure and doorway on the inside of the Western Wall area. As he explored, he unearthed an ancient and forgotten sealed gate to the Jewish temple that now bears his name. Excited, he wanted to open this 2,000 year old gate, but this was met with fierce opposition. When Mary looked at the Western Wall in the women's section, she walked in and there she filmed a ancient lintel. Today, if you look at the women's section of the Western Wall, you can see part of the large lintel where the doorway once stood and it continues into the women's prayer room. On the other side of the sealed gate, if you could walk through the wall, a mosque has been constructed in the ancient Rhodian vaulted passageway of Barclays Gate. And there is a pattern of behavior on the Temple Mount where mosques are created in Solomon's stables, in Barclays Gate, all these different areas so that the Temple Mount is regarded as off limits and holy to Muslims only so that the Jews cannot build a third temple. So this is another sealed gate that was rediscovered in modern times. It's Shabbat and we're at the Western Wall. It's Sabbath today, so people are coming here to prepare uh, for later on when there'll be loads and loads of people here. At 26, the fallen stones from the temple. Is it possible to find stones from the second temple? Jesus prophesied that every stone on the top of the temple platform would be thrown down. And in fulfillment of his prophecy, when the sacred temple in Jerusalem was destroyed by Rome in AD 70, each and every stone was pushed down beside the retaining walls off the platform. The Western Wall today and the underground retaining walls were not included in Jesus' prophecy because they are part of the underground platform and not the temple buildings themselves. When British archaeologists began investigating the area at the direction of Queen Victoria in the 19th century, they were shocked to uncover second temple stones still lying where they fell. In modern times, Jewish archaeologists continued the work and rediscovered the remains of the temple stones that had been buried, forgotten, ignored for 1900 years. These stones tell a horrific story of the violence of the Roman Empire as huge temple stones smashed into the first century roads below where Jesus would have walked on. If we were here 200 years ago, we would be stood with our heads quite near to this area here. So that you can see it was just all buried and left and forgotten. But based on the location, what we've got here is a part of the Royal Stoa. There's 164 grand columns, really highly decorated. The Sanhedrin would meet there. There's also sort of marketplace everywhere. I don't think about this as a quiet, holy place. It was a really, really noisy place. So these bits here, they fell here pushed here from the Romans and they're still here to this very day. These are the temple building remnants and they are incredible proof a second temple was real. At 25, a lost stairway to the Jewish temple, Robinson's Arch. Have you ever wondered what this broken stone in Jerusalem was once attached to? The first century writer and historian Josephus describes a long lost route leading up to the Jewish temple by a great number of steps. But where were these steps? In 1841, the American scholar Edward Robertson studied the western wall of the Temple Mount and rediscovered the lost airway. He said, we observed several of the large stones jutting out in the western wall. The stones had the appearance of having once belonged to a large arch. He was right, for in the time of Jesus, a set of stairs reached up from the ground level beside the first century Jewish shops to the Temple Mount and the Royal Stoa. You would have a shopkeeper and you'd have all these goods and wares and you could also have money changes in here. Remember, Christ is furious that people are trying to profit from serving God. Here, they're selling goods which are hugely inflated prices and also doing money changing at terrible rates. And you know a little bit about that today. <laughs> This arch was destroyed by the Romans in the year of our Lord 70, but this remnant of the monumental stairway remains in view as the rulers of Jerusalem change through the centuries. Today, the ancient arch is named after Edward Robinson, the man who rediscovered its purpose to support a monumental stairway from the Tyro Poean Valley to the Royal Stoa on the southernmost entrance to the Second Temple. You can see where Robinson's arch was, so it comes out. There's a stairway down here. People could walk under that stairway here. They would enter the temple. 
As archaeologists continued to study ancient Jerusalem, they found all the four lost gates on the western side of the temple. So the ancient stairway described by ancient Jewish sources was rediscovered at 24. The western and eastern walls, things in plain sight you've never thought about. Evidence for the second temple in Jerusalem is everywhere. The immense walls surrounding the Temple Mount in Israel provide evidence that King Herod and Solomon before him built vast retaining walls and a platform to establish the first and second Jewish temples on. When studying the ancient stones and walls of Israel, Dr. Rittmeyer identified ancient stones from the first and second temple periods and distinguished these from the more modern 16th century walls. For example, when you study the Wailing Wall, on the lowest visible level you find King Herod stones from 2000 years ago with a fine cut boss. Above them is a restored layer from the first Muslim conquest era and above these are smaller repaired stones from the Ottoman period which ended with their defeat in 1917 which led to the British Mandate period. If you go to the east though you could see much older stones that date back to the first temple period. Mount Moriah was a hard place to build a temple. You had to flatten it and the platform itself therefore still exists. The walls that support that platform still exist. But you've got to remember the Romans they tried to destroy as much of the wall as they could but it couldn't because it was a foundational at 23 ancient Jewish temple beams. Is it possible to find wooden beams from the second temple in Jerusalem, Israel? When Herod's temple was destroyed, the enormous wooden beams that supported the structure were pushed off the temple mount by the Romans and were left there burnt. Everything, the stones, the wood, it was all pushed off the temple mount. But in Jerusalem and in the ancient world, everything gets to be reused. So what happened to these enormous burnt beams? The al Asker Mosque now stands where the royal stoa resided in Jesus' time and this mosque was damaged by multiple earthquakes throughout its lifetime. By the time of the 1930s and 40s it needed major renovation. This was the British mandate period and so they asked for the help of the British and so the British experts photographed everything and analysed everything and they found these incredibly large beams, some more than 42 feet long. When the wood was analysed, radiocarbon 40 team tests found that some were cedars of Lebanon, others were cypress beams which dated to 2000 years ago and one dated back to the first temple period itself. By studying these beams experts found evidence that they have been reused from previous buildings, noting the protrusions and functional indentations as well as the decorative carvings similar to the descriptions of the second temple. If you look carefully you can actually see the burn marks probably from the second temple fires which destroyed the temple. The wood shows signs of stress from the extensive fire today. Some of these beams are still left beside the Golden Gate, wrapped up never to be examined again. The Golden Gate, the Eastern Gate, and during the time of Christ another gate would have stood here but this is what is here now. At 22, the hidden bridge to the temple, Wilson's Arch. What happened to the great bridge to the Jewish temple in the first century? The Jewish Roman historian Josephus describes a bridge that connected the upper city to the temple which was destroyed in the war with Pompeii in 63 BC and again in AD 70 by Titus. It disappeared from history until in 1864 breaking through an ancient walled off area around the Wailing Wall. British archaeologist Charles William Wilson rediscovered the remains of this ancient bridge and the arch bears his name to this day. Wilson's arch was an ancient bridge that connected the rich upper city of Jerusalem in Judea to Herod's temple and its remains can be found above and below ground level near the Wailing Wall. And when the Israelis dug underground they found the support structures from this ancient bridge. This bridge connected the rich homes of Jerusalem to the Temple Mount without having to walk down a valley. So we're really excited to be looking around this model of the first century of Jerusalem.
at 21 Herod's Temple Platform Foundation. Did you know that the second temple foundation and vaults are still underground in the temple area in Jerusalem, Israel? In the 19th century, British explorers were allowed to access areas of the Temple Mount and they found underground vaulted areas which were used to support the temple. Overlooked and ignored, these areas represent the enormous effort that King Herod and the Jews had to put in to create and extend the temple platform. They still remain important evidence that the temple once stood here. Most people are forbidden to access these sacred underground areas which are still under Muslim control, but along the southern and western wall sections of the Temple Mount, vaulted areas were constructed. In the 19th century, uh, Europeans have went in and studied them and drew pictures before the time of photography, but these testify for evidence for the underground temple chambers from the Second Commonwealth Israel period to the time of King Herod the Great. The foundations are there. At 20, secret cisterns, western wall. Did you know there's an underground battle for the control of the Temple Mount? The temple needed enormous amounts of water and there are many secret systems that have been mapped under the Temple Mount. Unfortunately, due to sensitivities, they can't be explored. Under the ancient Jewish temples, many water systems have been secretly carved and many have been mapped by Dr. Rickmeyer, who was the chief archaeologist for the Temple Mount. Today, most of these secret systems are impossible to enter without riots following. But fortunately, one system underneath and adjacent to the Western Wall is accessible. So a few people, the experts and the scholars, get to go underground to this water system. And it gives you an example of all the different water systems underneath the Temple Mount that have been mapped out. Shockingly, this dates to 2,500 years ago. That's the first temple period. And there's a hole in the ceiling where people could access the water for use on and around the temple, capable of holding 250 cubic meters of water. This system allows us a glimpse into an unexplored yet mapped system that exists under where the Jewish temples once stood from ancient Israel. So this is a brilliant example of what is underground the Temple Mount to see the secret chambers, the secret water systems, the secret tunnels. Few people have been able to see them and yet we know they exist. At 19, the Antonia Fortress. How was the Jewish temple defended? At the north of the Temple Mount, there was a low weak point that made the temple vulnerable. And therefore, King Herod built the Antonia Fortress to defend the second temple. And when the Jewish temple was finally destroyed by the Romans, first they had to conquer this fortress to get to the temple itself. Now today we still have the rock foundations. We can also see the open area which today is a Muslim school but that was the area that the Roman troops used to walk around to do their drills. Plus we possess written descriptions of this fortress and when the fortress was destroyed the stones were reused by Emperor Hadrian. The stones like everything in Jerusalem they all get reused and so we can still find the stones from Antonia Fortress underground in in Jerusalem, we've walked on and seen them. So we're at the back of the Temple Mount now, and the great Roman fortress would have been around here. It's a school now. It was put in this position right next to the temple. So anytime there was any trouble, the Romans could come and sort it out straight away. This is where the fortress stood. It's being remembered here from the first station of the cross and the second there. At 18, the pilgrimage road up to the temple, Hall of Siloam. What was the main road to the second temple in Jerusalem? When pilgrims like Jesus and his disciples visited Jerusalem, they would walk from the pool up the pilgrimage road which was built to the temple. This road was rediscovered in 2004 and it contains 600 meter steep step street leading up to the second temple. Pontius Pilate Pilate built this incredible pilgrim's road that goes all up to the temple and you can walk up that ancient drainage route too. Once in a lifetime wonderful experience. <laughs> See where you need to watch yourself here. If you go up it takes you up 
right next to the Wailing Wall but inside what is today Jerusalem's archaeological park. So this was a route that Jesus Christ and his disciples and hundreds of thousands of other pilgrims would have taken up to the Temple Mount. Everything in Jerusalem is pointing to the Temple Mount because the Temple Mount, the first and the second temple stood there. At 17, the Etiam Aqueduct, Jerusalem's lower and upper aqueducts. Jerusalem's temple needed enormous amounts of water. So where did it all come from? The second temple in Jerusalem demanded water to keep it clean and to supply the ritual baths with water. But where did it come from in such abundance? Incredible discoveries in recent times have found that water was bountiful on the Temple Mount because of the lower and upper aqueducts that piled water directly to Jerusalem and then to the Temple Mount. The Etiam aqueduct near Bethlehem was 13 miles long and exploited gravity to convey the water to Jerusalem. Ancient reservoirs called Solomon's Pools also source water for Israel's use and for 1900 years the lower aqueduct was one of the principal sources of water for Jerusalem and the Temple Mount. Until the British introduced modern piping to Israel in the British Mandate area, these aqueducts were maintained. You can trace the 13 mile route along this aqueduct all the way to Jerusalem to give the temple all the water it needed for the temple sacrifice cleansing and for all the Jewish mikvahs, the ritual holy baths. At 16, Jewish ritual baths. Are you prepared to explore the fascinating connection between Jewish ritual baths and the Temple Mount? Before you could go up to the temple, you had to be made ritually clean. How did you do that? You had to wash in water. And hundreds of Jewish ritual purification baths, known as mikvahs, have been discovered around Jerusalem. Many of these mikvahs can be explored around the Temple Mount, including the Western Walls, the Southern Walls, and underground on ancient routes the temple. There's only one reason why so many ritual baths are present around the Temple Mount and that's because the temple stood here in Jerusalem, Israel, and they needed enormous amounts of water. They needed to ritually cleanse themselves before going up to the temple and that's why so many mikvahs all surround the Temple Mount. This is evidence that the first and second Jewish temple stood on the Temple Mount. So just down here we've got a mikvah ritual bath where people used to use it for cleansing um, but later on people got baptised here. With 35 incredible pieces of evidence for the second temple to go through, join us next time as we continue this discovery.